All right, we're going to get this recording video-wise started here. Super excited. Have my new, one of my new best friends, and I and I am totally sincere here, Dr. Don Lehman is going to be with me. And uh, I told Sandy, I said, I have a new best friend. I actually <laughs> sent that to, to Alyssa Guadani, our PhD student down in Georgia. So Alyssa, I know she'll be watching this for sure when it comes out. Awesome. But we're going to talk about protein and your health span. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm renaming what I had as my title yesterday, you guys, because I had a pre-show with Don yesterday and it was, went fantastic. It was just, fan, just awesome. I'm going to call it metabolic transformation because that is Dr. Lehman's website. So we're going to just go with that so we can just pump the crap out of it for it. And, I, and Sandy went on there yesterday and I went on there today and it's an absolutely fantastic website. So you guys are going to want to bookmark that for sure. And as we're all growing older and doing whatever we do, stay on your, and I could drop, I, I could drop the F-bombs here because we're not recording video <laughs> right now. So I'm going to do it anyways. I'll, you know, because my dad talks, I do a lot of F-bombs and people don't get too upset, but take care of your fucking game, everybody. Just take care of your fucking game. Okay. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to say anymore. I'm not going to swear anymore. All right. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't offend my guest. I'm sure it doesn't because he's a. He's an athlete, does his thing. Yeah. I grew up I grew up in the country on a farm. So uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, Definitely I'm gonna... blue blue collar workers. <laughs> Good for you. Let me uh let me minimize this here. I gotta get my software started. Get this going here. And our grandkids are here, so it's like and then Sandy's awesome. getting ready to take the store and Get him out of here for a minute. And then I'm going to go throw the football with my grandson. I sort of got into playing tennis because I was pretty good at throwing a football. And the basic tennis serve and throwing a football are very similar. Well, you know, one thing I've, because uh, I've been a coach for a long time and um, my uh, grandson, oh, thank you, dear. My grandson is, uh, they're, they're both outstanding athletes. Uh, Harper is 10 and she's a left-handed pitcher and bam, as we call as I call him, bam, bam, he's eight. And, uh, he's a quarterback receiver, do it all kid, but he's a, got a heck of an arm. You know, some of these kids just have amazing arms. Yeah. You know, yeah. Both of my sons had great arms too. Better than mine. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's amazing how these kids, and it's just, again, the coaching up of young people. And yeah. we were talking just a little while ago because grandma called me in there and said, hey, talk to your grandson about why he needs to drink more water. And I just said, <laughs> I just went in and said, I'm not, don't tune me out there, big boy, but wa water is the, the spice of life. You got to have water. If you're going to be an athlete and you're going to have muscles and you're going to grow muscles, you got to drink water. I mean, there's all there's, I mean, that and the protein and the good food. Yeah. All of it. I mean, water will decrease your potential for performance quicker than anything. It's like, you know, 1% loss of body weights, a 4% loss of performance. You're going to teach me so much. I, I, I <laughs> love learning from guys like you, you know, working at the university again, thank you again for that nice uh, email you sent to Gabrielle. Um, and you know, the funniest thing is I ordered her book on Kindle, as I said, then I, I was like, Sandy, I need to get this book for you because I couldn't get the um, Audible with it. So I returned it and ordered the print version, but the print version's out of print. And it's like, oh. You know, I saw that too. And I thought, wow, that's shocking. But uh, she's well, you know, number three on the New York Times bestseller list and number five on USA Today. And she's in Wall Street it. Journal. So I, I can see why it's selling. <laughs> well, and she is... I mean, I was watching some of her Instagram stuff and she's just, golly, what a workout phenom she is. Yeah. The, uh, the, the, she? Or, the audio book, by the way, she actually recorded herself. Not everybody does that. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, and that's hard to do because I did one of my books like that. Yeah. It's, it's really hard. Okay. I don't want to eat up your time. We got, to, I need you for about an hour. You guys taking off? Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye, Harpy. Have fun. <clears throat> Bye, Bam. I'll see you. In, I'll see you in an hour. We'll put, we'll play catch. All right, get this thing going. Okay, guys, I'm gonna start this. So, okay. Bye, Bam. We'll see you. Take your jacket. It's raining here. Okay. Bye, guys. All right. Here we go.
you won't hear music, but there'll be music beds on the show once we once everything's produced. But I hear it, so it kind of gives me my intro and outro. So here we go. <clears throat> Last week, Brother Bill Matt was on the show for the first time ever. Meadowbrook Hall and Oakland University is the executive director of Meadowbrook Hall. Down in Southeast Michigan, high rent district of uh, Oakland County. Very, very, very nice. If you want to, if you're looking to do an event or a wedding or something like that, everybody, you're going to want to go check that one out. Meadowbrook Hall, Oakland University, huge place. Great story. Bill gave the whole background and it was, we'll have him back again to uh, talk more about all of the functions that they have down there, because that was the high altitude kind of historical perspective. All right, today, I am so thrilled. I've got, this, this, this show could go for four hours, as I've done with many of my other guests that are so smart. Dr. Donald Lehman is our guest today, and it, it Don is my one of my new best friends, Professor Emeritus, Department of Food and Science, Human Nutrition at the University of Illinois. That's Big Ten country. You know, we got to like Big Ten people. Served in the fa on the faculty at University of Illinois from 1977 to 2012. Dr. Lehman earned his BS and MS degrees in chemistry at Illinois State University, which means, you know, he's really smart guy. And then he went on and got his doctorate in human nutrition and biochem at the University of Minnesota, another Big Ten institution. He's recognized for research about protein and amino acids for muscle health related to athletic performance, life in general, obesity, di diabetes, cardiometabolic health. Dr. Lehman is a nutrition consultant to the food industry and very active on social media. I've got notes coming out of my notes, probably way over prepared for this, and that this is your life segment of this radio program. <laughs> uh, I don't know how much we're going to get done here, everybody, but I'm calling this one Metabolic Transformation because that's the website I'm going to keep plugging for you. You've got to go to MetabolicTransformation.com, MetabolicTransformation.com, and check out what Dr. Lehman has been doing, what he does, and how he can help you get better. I'm all about getting better, people. All right. Without much further ado, I'm going to welcome to the radio program for his first time and certainly not going to be his last. Like I said, my new best friend, Dr. Donald Lehman. Hey, Don, how are you, buddy? I'm good, Tom. Thanks for that introduction. Wow. It's going to be hard to follow the introduction. <laughs> well, you know, I try I try my best to give, give the love to my guests. I so much respect what you've done, and I'm so happy to get you so quickly. I mean, you responded so quickly to my initial outreach, so I appreciate that. Let's do the this is your life kind of thing. I've got my list of bullet points we talked about yesterday in our pre-show. But go ahead. Let's do your uh, your story. You got good eight minutes in this segment. Go right ahead, please. Okay. Well, that's that's always fun to sort of reflect on the serendipity of life. Uh, so I grew up in northern Illinois, small farm, small town called Kiwani. Uh, but it, you know, allowed me to grow up. You know, this is we're you know dating myself. This is back in the fifties. <laughs> uh, so you know, I I learned about animal growth. I learned about plant growth. I learned about whole food and nutrition and all of that. And you know, we ate very healthy and worked very hard, very physically active. And so that was sort of a great underpinning of values. Um, while I was in school none of my family had ever gone to college. So, you know, the horizons weren't necessarily particularly big, uh, but I knew I liked science. So as you mentioned, I went off to Illinois State University, which was close uh, to home and got two degrees in chemistry. Uh, the first one, you know, I started out, I was, I was convinced I was going to be a chemical engineer because that's all I'd ever heard of <laughs> growing up. Uh, I had no idea what it was, but it sounded good. And about three courses in the math and the calculus, I realized I wasn't going to be an engineer. <laughs> and uh, so I was studying chemistry. Funny how that happens, huh, Don? Yeah, yeah. It's sort of, uh, you know, I, I, I always remember a story. I was in an inorganic chemistry class and not doing particularly well. And the professor and I were chatting one day and he said, you know, when you find what your mission in life is, what your goal is, it'll be easy. And this isn't it. 
<laughs> so that told me I needed to look a little farther and I got into biochemistry and I, you know, I met a professor by the name of Arlen Richardson who got me started studying protein synthesis and looking at aging and how the body repairs itself and re replenishes. A lot of people think about, you know, protein synthesis or protein growth is something for kids, but people don't recognize that the average adult needs to make 250 to 300 grams of new protein per day just to repair and replenish their body. And that's critical. And I sort of got into that and, you know, I was doing okay. Again, thinking, you know, no idea what the future held. And, and Dr. Richardson said, I think you should get a PhD. And I said, really? And he said, I'll set you up at the University of Minnesota where some people are studying protein metabolism I said, really? And he said, okay. <laughs> and so I went off to Minnesota. And next thing I knew, I had a PhD in nutrition. And I got associated with some folks there who were also studying muscle, which kind of sung to me because, you know, I grew up with, you know, animal growth, but I also grew up with athletics, playing any sport that I could get into. So I was interested in muscle. So this sort of became a marriage of, of nutrition health and muscle development and long-term health. And while I was at Minnesota, I, I kind of developed the fundamental belief that nutrition, healthy nutrition is about two things, two tissues, keeping your brain healthy and your muscle healthy. If those two are healthy, you've got a really good shot at a long, healthy life. Everything else, we talk about heart disease and we talk about liver and we, we talk about diseases, but it's really about keeping the essential things healthy. And that's sort of, you know, set the framework, the groundwork that underpins everything I do, which frankly is a little different than what most normal nutritionists do. I had sort of approached things differently. <laughs> well, you came at this at a, a very interesting time in history. My guest today, everybody, is Dr. Donald Lehman, probably the preeminent knowledge um, source for protein. And he's all over the place. He's, I actually found and heard his interview with, uh, Dr. Uh, Peter Atia, and after reading his book and being a big fan of his for years and years now, was very uh, compelled to reach out. And again, Don reached right back, got right back to me. And we're going to talk about several things because it, with our five segment show, as everyone knows here, got to kind of break this down. We don't run this long, like three hour podcast. So we got to kind of com compress this thing. But we're going to start when we come back, everybody with um with the why why protein is important we're actually going to talk about one of don's colleagues and very very good friends dr gabriel Le is it leon or lion 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 okay lion. we'll talk about her book a little bit and um and how i'm um efforting to get that but we're also going to talk about muscle centric centric growth weight loss how much how much how much the food matrix uh, meal distribution. We got a lot to cover here. Don, I got about 30 seconds. You want to set this up to uh, before, while we're going to break here and talk about uh, where you want to go with the why of protein and we'll, and we'll go to break. Yeah. So as I mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, this process of repair and remodeling, one of the things I'd like people to understand is that if you sort of look at the body, it's in this constant state of turning over tissues essentially the body has to remake every protein in the body four times per year. And we think that is basically the aging process. How good do you do that? And the, the bottom line to how well you do it, it's a combination of exercise and your diet choices. And those are the two key four, uh, things. And, and protein is really central to the diet. So we'll talk about carbohydrate and protein balances and the risk of having too many carbs in the body. Uh, we know about diabetes, but it's a very real issue. So those are kind of the things that set it up. Okay, perfect. Thank you for doing that. That's a good segue. We're going to go to break here. Let me reset this thing. Calling this episode, everybody, Metabolic Transformation. Please mark that down, metabolictransformation.com with Dr. Donald Lehman, one of my new best friends. I want to just, this is going to be a fantastic Fantastic episode. If you've had any interest whatsoever in living a healthy life, which I think everybody does, you're going to want to check this one out. Dr. Don Lame is with us. I'm Tom Matt, and this is The Tom Matt Show.
And that's how easy that is. You know how to do this. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just conversational. I got to read to do here, Don, then we'll jump right back into uh, the why. Um, I hope you like the way I set that up with why. Sure. Muscle centric. It's, it's, it's basically, I just rearranged the things we talked about yesterday to try to yep. find a little bit of a flow. So, and then I've got a, a million notes, which I won't get to, but let me uh, do this read and we'll get right back into it. Do, 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 do. And all of this between the scenes stuff will be part of the video, of course. So just FYI, I've had, I've had one of my doctor friends, I had to cut out a segment, <laughs> a break segment because he was like, he started going off on some things and some, <laughs> some people, That's as you funny. can imagine. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, uh, 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 always, always, always be careful with what's on camera and what's off. Oh, well, that's, yeah, that's for darn sure. Especially when we're doing video. Here we Is go. the mic open or not? <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Here we go. This segment sponsored by our friends at Ameriprise Financial and, and, and Craig, Craig, Craig Styles. You are Ameriprise Financial Advisor, our Ameriprise Financial Advisor. Full disclosure, Craig Styles has all of our refirement zone savings. Thank goodness. I don't want to manage this. Sandy could manage it, but you know what? She's got to help manage this radio program and our careers post what we did. You know, my life at the university, her life in healthcare. So we have Craig Styles, who is our Ameriprise financial advisor. And we hope he's going to be yours as well. Reach out to Craig because with the right financial advisor, life can be ism, be brilliant, everybody. Numbers coming at you at 1-800-528-1355. Make sure you drop my name. Please do. You can say Tommy. You can say whatever. All my radio friends know me as Tommy. That's totally fine. Local number 517-483-4893. The cool thing about Ameriprise is they are a big company. Big, big, big. And you can reach to Craig, reach out to Craig via email as well, craig.styles at ampf.com. His offices are located at 2400 Lake Lansing Road. Suite B is in Brilliant or B is in Lansing, Michigan, 48912. Again, Craig, full disclosure, has all of our refinement zone savings so that we can continue to find guests like Dr. Don Lehman, who's going to be back with us in just a moment here. Stations that have carried us, will carry us, are carrying us. We've got stations all over the place. WGHN 92.1 on the lakeshore of Lake Michigan. First to carry us on broadcast radio years and years ago. It's awesome. WGIM 1240 AM in Lansing, which is the flagship of the Michigan Talk Network, which we are a part of on the weekends. WGRW 1340 in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Carried us for a long time. WKLQ 1490 Muskegon Whitehall over there. On the Lakeshore, WYPV FM 94.5, Mackinac City. See, we got a big reach. We're all over the place. We're up in the Upper Peninsula as well. And then we have our PBS affiliate at my alma mater, WKAR AM 870. Sorry about that. AM 870, East Lansing, Michigan, the PBS affiliate for the university. It's so great. I want to thank Craig for building Desideri Analytics, where we are making light of weighted decisions. And lastly, I want to plug the Michigan Talk Network and thank Stephen Ivy Gruber for having the faith to put us on the syndication of the Michigan Talk Network and beyond. Lastly, we have those four books on Amazon. Please go check those out. That thing called Amazon, and uh, you know, check out the Generation Us book wherever you want to go. All right, Dr. Don Layman's with me today. I love making new best friends. I love smart people because you can always continue to learn in life. Learning learning in life, to, for me, being a non-traditional student, I love talking to really smart people and having these conversations and being able to at least have a coherent conversation and understand and ask good questions. So I want to ask good questions of our guest today because he is the preeminent protein expert in our country, possibly in the world, calling this one metabolic transformation dot com is the website metabolic transformation with dr don layman don let's start right at the top as we talked about you were you started to uh t talk about the why and all of the macros that go into protein and all of your research let's just start right at the beginning we got a good six minutes to go in this segment i want to give you plenty of time to talk about this we can continue this through but the why why do people need to know more about what you know well, I, like I said earlier, you know, I think that muscle and brain are the two tissues that we have to protect for healthy aging. And 
early in my career, when I started studying muscle, I realized that it's the one tissue we really have control over. We can control its metabolism because of activity. And I also realized that it makes up 50% of our body protein. And that's a really very expensive part of our diet. It takes a lot of energy, a lot of protein to maintain that. And so, you know, I just sort of narrowed it in on that. I focused on it. And the more I studied it, the more I realized it was really the center of how we metabolize blood sugar, you know, you know, how do we become insulin insensitive? Why do we become diabetic? It's how we metabolize uh, fats. So why do we have high fats in our blood? Muscle is really the center for all of that. And if muscle's not healthy, that's when you start getting these problems, whether it's high blood lipids that lead to heart disease or high blood sugars that lead to diabetes or just high calories, you know, too many calories that lead to obesity. So muscle really is the center of really all of our adult health problems that everybody talks about. And, and people, you know, try to focus on, well, it's about body fat. How do I get rid of fat? Or it's about heart disease. How do I make you know my heart help? It's not about those things. It's how do you keep the muscle healthy and then everything else falls into place. So we've really got it backwards. Uh, my colleague, you mentioned Dr. Gabrielle Lyons, uh, says that you know one of her comments is usually that you know we've got it all wrong. It's not an obesity epidemic. It's an epidemic of being under muscled. And we just don't have healthy muscles. You know, I listened to the podcast. Dr. Don Lehman's our guest today, everybody. We're calling this episode Metabolic Transformation, Protein and Your Health Span, as we talked about yesterday with Health Span. It's very important to understand that this the, the, the building of muscle continues to go throughout life. And so as we do these things, you have to embrace this. You have to embrace that weight training is important that physical fitness is important, activities to promote movement are important, but we've got to really grasp onto this. You know, Don, when I was looking up, and as a trainer, I know that, you know, they're, they're the ratios that they have, the supposed ratios anyways, of your calories with fat, protein, and carbs, because protein is obviously one of the three macronutrients. What people do, they start to, they start to manipulate these macros and things get all out of whack. And again, through your podcast that I listened to, you talked about the carbs and the snacking and how the snacking was really the what culprit. I got a minute and a half to go. Can you kind of finish that thought and uh, talk about that and, and, and part of the why with, with all the snacking that's going on? Yeah. I, I, I mean, to just focus on that part of it, one of the things we've done is look at how, why people are overeating. And one of the things we know is that Hum Americans are social eaters. We eat because it's breakfast time or lunch time or dinner time. Uh, and for the most part, we're reasonably consistent about that. But the real unknown out there is snacking. And people believe that they should have a mid-morning snack or they believe at mid-afternoon or they should sit in front of the TV at night. And a lot of the appetite regulation data shows that it's really this snacking outside of meals that causes the excess calories that leads to obesity. So that's one very serious part of the obesity question. And, and one of the things by having a higher protein, lower carbohydrate diet is you're less prone to snacking. And so the appetite regulation becomes much better. So that's that's one of the underpinning part of the whole metabolic transformation that we try to create. All right, let me reset this thing. That was th thank you for saying that. It was very concise and very, very spot on. Metabolic transformation, Dr. Don Lehman, the preeminent knowledge man of, of protein and why we need to understand the, the relationship in protein as a macro and in building muscle. And when we come back, the next segment, I want to talk muscle-centric, age-related protein synthesis efficiencies, everything that I've been learning from Don and listening to his podcast. And please check out that website, metabolictransformation.com. Sandy immediately went there yesterday, fell in love with it. I went there today. It's great. I've got it up on my other screen here. We talk more about these things. And I guarantee you, I will be reaching out to my friend Don to come back to the radio program more often. Again, Dr. Don Lehman's here, Metabolic Transformation. This is the Tom Manchin. Okay, easy. 
if I like doing talk radio, you know, it's just one of those just just flies by. Let me do this another read here and we will get right back to it. Did do we need to can go back to the why more, Don, or would you like to go right into the muscle centric stuff? Is that a good good jump off? How do you want to do this? Um, you know, I think I think we need to address what's different about adults. So age related changes, I think, is where we should go. Okay. Uh, and we can uh you know, we can go as far into talking about carbohydrate amounts and fat amounts and what muscle actually does, how it burns calories. I think that might be interesting to people. Okay. Very good. Got it. Here we go. The simplest way to connect with us here at the radio program, everybody, is through social media or our website, TomMattShow.com. We put a tremendous amount of energy and time into that website. Please go there. All of our podcasts are there. All of our social media is there. All of this distribution channels for just the audio portion of the podcast. YouTube's there. It's all there. TikTok's there. It's it's very, very user-friendly, and it's a simpler page. Please check it out. Facebook, Tom Matt Show, Instagram, Twitter, they're all the same, Tom Matt Show. Our mission is to build a engaged society and team. That's why we have people like a Dr. Don Lehman coming on the show to help us live longer and prosper, like Mr. Spock would say. You know, we are all about the three C's of community collaboration and cooperation, sharing good stories, education, and entertainment. That's what we do here with this radio program. We do not cut people. We want to help share good information. And there's a lot of good people out there that are doing similar things. Like Dr. Uh, like Dr. Lehman turned me on to his friend, Dr. Lyon, and I'll be reaching out to her as well. Already reached out on LinkedIn. And that's the whole thing about connecting with good people, everybody. You want to make sure, because when you reach out to these folks, they want to help. These, these experts out there, that's what they live for. They live to help us share information. You don't go get a PhD because you want to sit at home and you know read books. You get a PhD in, in nutrition and dietetics and, and the protein synthesis and all this because you want to share knowledge. And that's all there is to it. And believe me, I know because I've spent 25 years at Michigan State and I've worked with PhDs my whole career. All right, let's get into the muscle-centric age-related protein. We'll get into some of the macros and the synthesis. I want to give uh, give Dr. Lehman an opportunity to really talk about this. This is where we start. The rubber starts to hit the road, really, I think, um, Don. It, it's really because of the growing older population that we have, and we have more and more people. The, the boomers are living longer. You and I are both, you know, we're both working out. We're still doing our thing. We're very, very active. And if we can continue to help people get there, you don't have to waste as much money, spend as much money on health care if you take care of yourself on the front end. And so, please. Let's let's talk about it. Go into uh, that muscle centric age related issue and however you want to describe this. Yeah, so let's let's take a couple of tracks on it. One, uh, I mentioned that I started my research doing some aging research, and for years we've known that as we get older, uh, our rate of protein turnover, our rate of making new protein declines with age, and we always thought that was an inevitable part of aging. But around the turn of the century, around 2000, discoveries in my lab and a couple of other labs, we realized that in older individuals, it really wasn't that they lost the capacity for protein synthesis, it's just that the efficiency went down. And so what we now know is that we always thought about children needing more protein, but it turns out because of this efficiency issue, older adults actually are the ones who need more protein, that the efficiency of handling it goes down. And so our needs for both quantity and quality goes up. And so I think that's a, a learning for people is that, we, that we've always sort of had the idea, well, I'm an adult, I'm not growing, I really don't need as much. In fact, you'd probably need more. And so that's a first you know, piece of information. Another sort of pet peeve of mine is we've always addressed the macronutrients as a, what should you avoid? Uh, it's always been, well, cholesterol or saturated fat, or those are actually all nonsense. Uh, the issue is how do you balance calories against protein? So when you start thinking about your diet, the first thought you should have is what level of protein am I going to have? 
If I'm going to be an athlete and I want a higher protein diet, should I have 150 grams per day or 200 grams per day? Make a decision. If I want to be a vegetarian and I'm only going to eat 65 grams per day, that's a decision. Then the diet and lifestyle have to build, be built around it. Uh, so when I hear people say, well, protein is a percentage of calories, I mean, that's really dumb. I mean, there's no real logic to that. In fact, if it's a percentage of calories, it's inverse. Your higher your calorie intake, the lower the percentage. Or to put it differently, if you're a 70-year-old female only eating 18, you know, 1,400 calories per day, your protein probably should be 30, 35% of it because your protein requirement is the same as it was when you were 25. And so people don't get that. They think, well, I think that people get so caught up with these numbers and the manipulation of macros. And you told me yesterday that you, you've had an interesting career where you've done speaking engagements across the world with some of these, um, the early pioneers of weight loss and, and dieting. And I don't even like to use the term dieting, but you, you've you been around all these people and weight loss and, and muscle loss. They go together in, in, in a way. It's, it's, it's interesting because you told me yesterday, when you lose weight, you typically will lose muscle. And this is not what we want. Yeah. So back in the, I, I mean, it, in graduate school, I got very interested in, in some amino acids, part of protein amino acids called branch chain amino acids. And they're really unique because most amino acids are actually metabolized in the liver, but these are only metabolized in muscle. And I kept thinking about why would that be? What, what's muscle? Why did we evolve to do that? And then, uh, you know, at the, in the 1990s, we had Barry Sears and the Zone Diet and Bob Atkins and the, and the you know, the ketogenic type of diet. Uh, and, and and Mike Eads and and protein power and some of those. And I started thinking about those. And I said, you know, they're all kind of interested in the carbohydrate aspect. I think it's really the protein aspect that's driving this. And so we started studying and we had been studying these branch chain amino acids. And what we discovered was the amount of those in the meal really regulates muscle protein synthesis in an adult. And so we then started building our diets around the concept, how much of that do we need? And that sort of repositioned how we think about protein and carbs. Uh, people said, well, you know, carbs are, you know, the food guide pyramid, if we all can reflect back on it, said, don't eat much protein at the top and eat a lot of carbohydrates as grains at the bottom. And that turned out probably was the prescription for epidemic increases in obesity and diabetes. It's just way too many carbs for the human body, unless you're an elite marathon runner, then you can handle it. Uh, one of the ways we like to teach carbohydrates is you have a basic need for about 100 grams per day. And every gram beyond that, you have to earn with muscle activity. And that you can earn it at about maybe 60 grams per hour. So the average American is eating around 300 grams of carbohydrate per day. That means they need, that means that the average American needs three hours of intense exercise every day, not to become obese, just to burn the carbs that they're eating. That is an amazing, amazing statement. I mean, I never, see, that's why we do these shows, everybody. All right, let me reset this thing because we're going to come up on break here. This is this is greatness. Metabolictransformation.com is where you want to go. I'm calling this show Metabolic Transformation with Dr. Don Lehman. We want to talk about health span. We want to talk about the RDA. We want to talk about how many grams per day you should have of protein, all of these types of things. We come back, we'll finish the thread of where we were talking about muscle-centric, age-related protein synthesis since if i if i could interrupt just for a second on the website for viewers there's actually a 10-part series on understanding metabolism so under the the pull down buttons under learn there's actually a 10-part section there that's really lit, written for the lay public to understand these concepts but when we come back i, I want to do a little more of a deep dive this is going to we're going to pivot off of our notes a little bit my notes a little bit and talk about the website and why it's very important for people because we get so much information in the world. How do we, again, 
how can we be discerning in what and where we get our good information? This is something we need to discuss. So I'm going to bring that back in, everybody, when we come back, because we're going to go to break here in just a second. Again, Dr. Don Lehman's with me. We're going to talk about the Metabolic Transformation website. When we come back, we're going to pivot a little bit because it fits into everything that we're talking about on this high altitude first visit with my new best friend. Talk about the food matrix, but let's find good sources of information. We appreciate you listening to this radio program slash podcast, watching, listening, however you want to do this. Again, Metabolic Transformation, Dr. Don Lehman, I'm Tom Matt, and this is The Tom Matt Show. Thank you for jumping in and doing that. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, lots of bits and pieces of information, but that website has a lot of information on it that has evolved over the last, it's only, the website's only a little over a year old. So it's it's Very something nice. that's still evolving. Well, let's let's talk about that. I got to read to do here and then we'll uh, we'll jump right back into it. Got to pay a couple bills. So let me do this. Two more segments, and then I got you wrapped. So let's do this. Fourth segment of the Tom Ant Show is sponsored by Brock, Brock, Brock Fletcher, selling team of Keller Williams Realty. If if there was a time in history that you needed to find a really good realtor, real estate company, people to protect your money, again, full disclosure, Brock, 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 and the selling team, Mike Dedman included, were our buyer's agent, seller's agent for Big House Holt, Little House Lansing, took good care of us. I mean, when my dad passed away this past summer, helped me, I had to make a phone call because now I've got to take care of this house down in Dearborn, Detroit area. It's like, what am I, what do I do here? What do I do here? Brock was the guy I called because I trust Brock so much. Please reach out to him. 517-853-6408 is the office number. The super secret, not so super secret number to his pocket, 517-303-3262. That's his cell phone. Text him, drop him a voicemail. He is very, very good about returning calls, always. You will get a message if you get his voicemail saying, I will return your call between three and five. He changes those daily. And as a former telecom pro with 25 years at Michigan State, Believe me, I appreciate when professionals do these types of things with their voice calls. It's so important to get that information out there. That's why you want to go to the Kelling, the selling team of Keller Williams, kwsellingteam.com, kwsellingteam.com, Brock Fletcher, Mike Dedman, the whole team. And once again, everybody, it's so easy to go to our homepage, tommatshow.com, the bottom of the homepage where we have the banners. I may even get a banner from my guest today, Dr. Don Lehman, for his website, because it's so important to get you these good sources of information. I like putting that on our websites. I like having good information. That's what we do. So please help Brock. Go to Craig, 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 Ameriprise, Keller Williams, the selling team of Keller Williams. They help us, and we want them to help you. All right, we're going to pivot a little bit here. We're going to tie it all together because we talk about the food food matrix and protein. Dr. Don Lehman's here, the preeminent source for protein information. Just I, wonderful talking to smart people. Let's talk about your website a little bit here, Don. And, and because it is such a nice website and what you're doing there and you're getting the information out there, please let's share a little more information about that and why people should you know bookmark that metabolictransformation.com. Please go right ahead. So when I was at the University of Illinois and working with the protein, um, we were focused on, you know, how to be healthy adults. And one of the aspects is, you know, as we get older, uh, we all tend to lose some muscle mass. Uh, and we, we sort of understood some of the mechanisms for that. Unfortunately, to study that, you know, aging is you lose about five to 8% muscle mass per decade. And as a researcher, that's really hard to study. Uh, most of our techniques require about a 10% change to pick it up. And so that means you have to outlive your subjects. You know, you can't study it long enough. Uh, and so we started thinking about other conditions and weight loss was the one we thought, okay, here's a condition, as you mentioned, if you just go out and do a crash diet, 
somewhere between 35 and 50% of your weight loss will be muscle mass. It's a huge loss. And that's why people who lose weight will regain it so quickly is that they're actually deteriorating their long-term body health by doing these yo-yo type diets. And so we said, well, if we correct that with protein and the diet, get the macros right and use exercise, we did some exercise studies, can we change that? And what we showed is we could take from people who were just following the food guide pyramid, following exactly what the dietary guideline, they were losing 35, 36% of their muscle, of their lean body mass during weight loss. We could drop that down to 6%, which is probably about the minimum you'd ever lose just by doing the right amount of protein and exercise. So that, that was kind of the issue. And once we had published that, people caught, started asking me, so well, why haven't you written a book? How can I get this information? And I, and you know, I sort of, I didn't want to put in the work to do the book. Gabrielle Lyons has now done the book for us. Uh, but I said, let's create a website where we can put this information. So that website really was coming out of the research and our clinical research program at the University of Illinois uh, is basically what we learned there. The diet that we use is actually there. You can uh, subscribe to it if you want to. But the, the, the website has a lot of information, a lot of practical information about what is metabolism, what you know, what's good protein, how do you put together a diet. Uh, I have a, an application book there that you can get. Um, we, one of the problems that we also saw is one of the key meals to correcting diet is breakfast. And people are busy. They get up in the morning and they have kids or they're you know, running off to work or whatever. And so what we had discovered is that you need to have a higher protein, low carbohydrate breakfast. And that's tricky. You know, people say, well, I don't want to make bacon and eggs and, you know, go to all that work. For... So what we did was we started experimenting with meal replacements. And so we have developed some various meal replacement type of shakes, and we have one on the website. So we want to have something that people can do that's convenient. They can mix up in a blender and run out the door with and drink on the way to work or sit at their desk and drink it or whatever. So um, that's really the origin of the website is we wanted people to have access to what we had learned in our research, and we wanted them to have the practical knowledge of how to put it into their life. Excellent. Thank you for saying that. It was kind of a segue that we wanted to go back into. There are other there are other parts of this interview that I wanted to touch on. We won't we will not be able to uh, cover it all, but let's try let's do our best here. Don with meal distribution, how much food, your food matrix, can you kind of set that up? We got a minute to go in this segment and then we can carry this through in the final segment. And then when we get into the final segment, we can talk about the difference with your plant animal proteins and, and and that kind of there's so much misinformation disinformation out there but can you set it up just for the end of this segment and we'll come back and we'll finish that thread please so the so the main thing that we've learned that we're trying to get people to accomplish is getting a balance of protein and particularly what we call refined carbohydrates and that's things like breads and cereals and rice and potatoes and all of these starchy kind of carbohydrates. So we're trying to get that. So uh, our the balance we're trying to create at each meal is we want uh, focus on protein somewhere between 30 and 50 grams at a meal. We want uh, something with fiber in it, good for your GI tract and satiety. And we want to control the carbs at about a one-to-one -one ratio with the protein. So if you decide you're going to have 45 grams of protein at a meal, then you can have about 45 grams of carbs. The average American's eating somewhere between 75 and 100 at each meal. And so that's sort of how we're trying to teach it. Gotcha. Okay, so when we go with this and we talk about, again, circling back to weight loss and muscle loss and how you need to understand this, everybody, it's very important to do the readings, go to the website, and I'm looking at it right now, metabolictransformation.com. You've got home, you've got meet Dr. Lehman, you got tools, you got learn, you got shop. There's all kinds of good things there. We come back from break here. I want to talk about, again, meal distribution, talk about those morning workouts and how much you want to have, how much, how many 
grams instead of calories of protein, because that's where I've learned with Dr. Lehman that it's not really, it's not the calories, it's the grams that you really want to focus on. But then also this discrepancy that we have in the world, everybody, of this plant versus animal. And Don, you want to take 30 seconds to talk about and set that up about the difference between the plant and animal? Because would that give you a couple seconds to talk about that, please? Sure. Um, and, and in fact, I just put out a, a statement on Twitter this morning on that exact topic. But um, basically, uh, we have this push for a more plant-based diet. Um, and there's some risk to that. You know, I think every nutritionist would say, you know, we're eating more broccoli and green beans is great. But right now, Americans have 70% of their calories coming from plant-based calories now, and it's really crappy. You know, it's basically refined sugars, uh, it's refined grains, it's processed oils and things like that. So uh, what we know for 100% fact is that animal proteins have higher quality than all plant proteins. So if you shift to a more plant-based diet, you have to recognize you're going to eat more total protein more total calories to be equal. And so that's a real risk for most adults who don't need calories. And that's where we'll come back to talk about this. Thank you for doing that, Don. Dr. Don Lehman is our guest today, everybody. Metabolic transformation, protein, and your health span. That's the title of today's episode. Again, go to metabolictransformation.com. Look at what Dr. Lehman has been doing out there. This is going to help all of our listeners It'll help our children, it'll help our grandchildren, and it will help us. If you're training hard and you're doing the work, you've got to fuel yourself efficiently. We'll talk about that when we come back. Again, Dr. Don Lehman's here, Metabolic Transformation. It's the Tom Matt Show. All right. Don, this is where we um, do the plug, plug, plug. So I'm going to throw it to you right out of break. Plug anything, everything. If you want to talk about um, Gabrielle Lyon's book, um, whatever you whatever you want to do here, I can cut that little chunk out for you and send it to you. I'll, I'll split all this up the video wise. Um, please go right ahead. You can use it, however, as a promo. Yeah. I don't have a lot of things I plug, but I will mention her book and you know, yeah. sort of mention the website. But yeah, yeah sure. Whatever, whatever you want to, and then um, <laughs> I'm not, a, I'm not a profit center. <laughs> well, that's, and, and that's, that, you know what, you're an information center and that's a cool yeah. thing about talking to people like you. It's just like yeah. educating people. That's how intrinsically. And I said this with radio, cause this, you know, with 13th season that we just started here with this for a long time for me, I was always trying to think about, you know, we need to make money at this. We need to make money at this. And then I realized that we're getting a lot of intrinsic value from helping people because people would come up and say, you know, I really like what you're doing. I listen to you all the time. You don't get that, you know, this immediate feedback. And yeah. so once I started to realize that it's like you as a, as a professor over 30 years, right. it's like yeah. when you help somebody like G Gabrielle Lyon, it's yeah. amazing yeah. what happens. Yeah, no, there's a lot of satisfaction in, in developing students like Gabrielle and, you know, hundreds of others that I have developed. And, and when I left the university, one of the things I wanted to do was I realized that the research we were doing wasn't getting to the public. The public didn't see it. Uh, yep. And so I decided the next phase of my life and career, it was going to be more about trying to get information to the public. And so that's what I'm doing. Good for you. No, you're very noble. Very seriously. Here we go. Welcome back to the radio program, everybody. Tom Matcho. Guest today is Dr. Donald Lehman. I call him Don because he's my pal. Metabolictransformation.com. Calling this show Metabolic Transformation. Protein and your health span. Don, Go ahead. This is plug, 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 whatever you'd like, um, share that information. And like to, I'm going to circle back and talk about how you've uh, educated hundreds and hundreds of students in your 30 plus years at the University of Illinois. But we'll talk about that in a second. But go ahead and do your plug, plug, plug first, whatever you'd like to share that information with. Go right ahead. Yeah, I uh, don't necessarily have a lot of things to plug, but uh, people can find me on Twitter at 
at Don Lehman. Uh, and it's all pretty much information. I don't tweet about my vacations or uh, anything else. You know, it's all pretty much uh, nutrition, which I think you'll find useful. Uh, we've been talking about the website, Metabolic Transformation. I think it's got a lot of good information. And my close friend and dear colleague is Gabrielle Lyon, which uh, she has basically taken a lot of the things that we have worked on over the years, and she's put it into a book, uh, Forever Strong, which is uh, number three on the New York Times bestseller list now and, and uh, number five on USA Today. So it's a great book. Uh, it's embarrassingly dedicated to me, but uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a great book. And I think that it's really written for the lay public to understand these things, which are kind of complicated topics. Well, I also, I would like to plug Peter Atia's book because his book is is outstanding as well. There are so many good sources of information out there. Don, like we were talking about during break, the hundreds, perhaps even thousands of students that you've helped over the years, the most rewarding thing in life is to have that intrinsic value of knowing that you're just sharing good information with people. And really, you're a pioneer when it comes to this kind of stuff because, as you said in the, earlier in the show, when you first started in your career as an undergrad and grad student, a lot of this information wasn't out there. And, and just like so many things in science, as we get, you know, more power with our technology and genomics and everything that we can do, it's everything's shifting and changing. And so I thank you for what you've done in the past and all the students that you've helped. Yeah. We, you know, we, had some ideas about what would change sort of how we thought about protein and how we thought about adult health. But it took us 15 years to get the methods and the technology that we could actually prove it. So, you know, I think the lay public thinks, well, there's a question, why don't you solve it? Well, sometimes it takes a long time to figure out how to prove an answer. And so to your point, I think one of the most gratifying things in my career is having students come back you know, five years, 10 years, 30 years later and say, you changed my life or, you know, you changed my health or whatever. And, you know, that just, it's very heartwarming. It, it really makes the whole process. I think when I got into it, you know, I, as I said, I started in chemistry, which is kind of esoteric. General public has no clue what that means, but I was able to take my interest in biochemistry and chemistry to nutrition which everybody has an interest in. So, you know, it was, it was great fun as a kid who grew up on a farm to be able to take really basic science and change people's lives. And that's really, that's really gratifying. Let's, let's, let's jump off from there and talk about the science, the plant versus animal and all of the um, research that you've done on this topic. You started to talk about that at the end of the previous segment. And let's let's expand on that because of the different aspects that go along with this between the calorie counts and the mis and disinformation yeah. and then all this engineered food that's out there with the snacks, we we get inundated and in the marketing and all of this and just buy 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 and all of these all of these carbohydrates that are out there that we overconsume. Please let's talk about the plant versus animal on the protein side of things and your expertise on yeah. that. Could you please expand on that? Yeah, and and we could get into the carbohydrate part too. The the plant versus animal for protein, like I said earlier, the animal proteins always have higher quality. When we look at actual protein requirement, protein is simply a food. I like to use the analogy, it's like a vitamin pill. We don't talk about the color and shape or digestibility of the pill, we talk about the 14 vitamins inside of it. And that's really all protein is. Protein is a food delivery system for amino acids. And if we look at our actual requirement, we have an absolute, absolute requirement for nine, what we call essential amino acids. There are 20 amino acids in our body and nine of them we have to get in the diet on a daily basis. And then we have what we call sort of non-specific amino acids or nitrogen. So those are the two parts. The, the nine essential amino acids are kind of hidden in the protein name. And what we know is that in every animal protein, those nine are in the right balance. They're in the right balance for humans because animals and humans have similar balance. In plants, the amino acids are there, but they're in the balance for the plant. 
the plants is growing flowers and seeds and roots and stems, which are pretty different than brains and hearts and legs and arms. And so, you know, the, the plant proteins are there. And the other pro problem with it is 50% of the amino acids in a plant are bound to the fiber, which we can't digest. And so they're not available. We call it the bioavailability. So plants have two strikes. One is that the protein's not very available. And the other is that the amino acids are not in the right ratio. And so we actually have evolved as humans to use animals to correct that ratio. We can get it by eating plants, but you have to eat more calories and more uh, total protein. Uh, for example, uh, you can eat, uh, if you're thinking about, uh, say, something like quinoa versus, say, something like a whey protein, a dairy protein, uh, you can stimulate your muscle protein synthesis with 25 grams of whey protein, but it takes to get the same level of uh, leucine, the critical amino acid, it takes seven and a half cups of quinoa. And so it just physically, you can't eat it. It's, you know, it's the difference between uh, having uh, 300 calories or having uh, 4,000. You know, it just, it's just not a, a comparison. Uh, so the, the issue with plants is they're great. They tend to be great, you know, beans, nuts, lentils, things like that are great food sources, but they actually should be considered great carbohydrate sources in your diet that actually provide good protein. To just shift your protein all to those plant sources, it's hard to eat enough volume or enough calories to make it work. So that, you know, that's what people need. And I could give you a couple of examples. Uh, do you want a, an example of this? I think the yeah, go ahead. one that I like all the time is Think about a wheat cereal. A typical wheat cereal will say a serving is a cup and it will have about four grams of wheat protein in it, okay? Wheat protein's only about half digested, but we'll go with the four. You then look at, it says, okay, combine that with six ounces of milk. You now have 10 ounces total. And it turns out that that is exactly a balanced essential amino acid, a wheat protein with a cow's milk. And now people are saying, well, how about if I use plant-based? So how about if I use soy? Well, now if you look, soy and wheat are deficient in the same amino acids. And so to make that a balanced breakfast, you need to have 25 to 30 ounces of soy milk to balance it. And if you go to almond milk, it's over 50 ounces. So how many mothers out there giving their child a wheat cereal are choosing between six ounces of milk or 30 ounces of soy milk as the choice. I mean, that's the kind of practical information the public needs to understand about making plant-based choices. That is a very good, and, and getting into helping our children and kids in malnutrition, and we got a minute and a half to go before we got to wrap this thing. So I just need a quick snapshot of this. When, we can, when I get you back down, we can talk about this, but please, you just you just talked about that kids in malnutrition what can we do for the world to be sustainable you know we know that protein is the most limiting nutrient worldwide and so i did early in my career i did a lot of work in africa with malnutrition and it really turned me on to some of these ideas early cuz we realized that when a child didn't grow correctly in their first 10 years, they were destined to obesity. They're what we call skinny fat. They don't look particularly overweight, but they have no muscle mass. And so they're over fat. They're destined to issues of heart disease, diabetes. Uh, it's uh, India, for example, is now, I think, number two in the world in diabetes. They don't look overweight, but they have no muscle mass. And so it's critical for a child to develop it. And one of the problems, you know, we mentioned earlier about snacking, a lot of these snacks that people are giving their children are very poor food sources. They're high carbohydrate, very low protein. They have no satiety and lots of calories. So long-term risk, uh, we're doing a lot of things in our food supply that really destine us to obesity. His name is Dr. Donald Lehman. His website is metabolictransformation.com. 
We called this one protein and your health span. Don, if you had a 30 second takeaway, what would you like to say to the listeners for your first visit with our show? Uh, well, it's a pleasure to be here. If everybody uh, wanted to make one change, increase your protein and reduce your carbohydrates at the first meal of the day when you come out of sleeping. That will change how you feel about yourself. It'll change about your energy per day. It'll help you get your appetite back on track. Get around 35 to 40 grams of protein in that first meal and keep your heart carbohydrates less than that. If our show fits your business or group's mission, we want to be of service to you through our guest topics and issues. Please let us know. Go to the contact box, TomMattShow.com. I want to thank my guest and my friend, Dr. Don Lama, for being with us. Check out his website, MetabolicTransformation.com. Again, always remember before you can share love with others, you must love yourself first. Get those 35 grams of protein in the morning. Thanks again to Dr. Don Lehman, Sandy, Craig, Brock, Samantha. We'll talk to you next weekend, everybody. Have a great week. Go out and ignite your life. Lastly, I'd like to say thank you to Mitch Anderson for producing this show. Tom Mitch shows production of Boomer Talk Media. We want to bring your story to life. Thank you so much for joining us. We are out. Boom. Well, that was so Definitely free ranging. <laughs> no, that's that's kind of how I roll. I mean, yeah. you can tell that uh, that's that's the beauty of our show. We kind of bounce around and have fun yeah. with things, and um, yeah. I hope I hope you found it enjoyable and different. Yeah, I mean, it's fun. Yeah, always, thanks. I mean, that's, always that's, like the chats. Well, the biggest compliment that I get is something you just said. You know, it's just fun. It's a it's a good it's a good chat. It's just information. And we're just sharing stories on radio and then turn it into a podcast and a little video yeah. here. And you know what? It's all good. Have a great vacation, my friend. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm excited. It's kind, of, kind of rainy and chilly here in the Midwest today. So uh, off to Aruba, sunny and 85. On for a couple, are you there for like two weeks? Just a week. So Friday to Friday. So uh, I've, had, you. I've had a timeshare there for over 20 years. So I'm pretty familiar with the island. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Well, have a good time. And then I will be in touch when this drops. I'll have a whole like an email media package with all the links to everything and then uh, share it however you will. If you'd like to put that link up on your website, like you did with some of the other shows, that'd be awesome. Uh, whatever Thank you, you. Feel. and uh, you'll see it'll, it'll be good. It, it's uh, we've been doing this a little while and we like to, we like to think we're got, we've gotten pretty good at this kind of stuff. So thank you so much, Don. Sounds good. Thanks Tom. Right. It was fun. All right, buddy. Thank you. It was Bye. fun. Thank you. Appreciate you. Let me tell you guys, getting a guest like a Don Lehman is so rewarding. It's just, it makes my heart sing. Seriously. I mean, what, what, that's why we, <laughs> that's why we do what we do. Bringing you guys good information, having fun, talking, free ranging. <laughs> <laughs> as he called it well welcome to tom's world <laughs> thanks you guys for watching listening doing all the good stuff and uh, please share this out and again the protein this protein and muscle muscle mass for us growing older adults even for the younger people jump on it have a great day everybody we'll talk to you soon we're out